Welcome back to the channel and in today's video we are going to be talking about DeepSeek, this new AI company from China that has taken the world by storm. Everyone right now is talking about DeepSeek. There are those who love their AI models. They say they're superior to ChatGPT and Claude and other AI models out there. There are those who say it's overrated and there are those who are concerned about working with DeepSeek because they are a Chinese-based company. So what I want to do in today's video is to give you my general thoughts about DeepSeek in comparison to the other AI models out there, give you a little bit of an insight as to how the models were trained because it's quite fascinating. And then I will also address the privacy concerns about working with our DeepSeek. I want to start off first of all by showing you something very, very interesting. And this is a graph of the NVIDIA stock now, as you can see that as of Friday, the 24th of January, the stock was about $142. And then it had a massive dip to $122. And it seems to have rebounded to $128. However, this sharp decline, I believe, cost the stock market about a trillion dollars well lost. And the NVIDIA stock has taken a huge hit. Why? Well, that's because apparently the AI models for DeepSeek are very, very cost effective, and they cost a fraction of the cost that it took the AI models under OpenAI to develop. I believe that the models for DeepSeek cost roughly about $6 million to train. In comparison, the AI models under OpenAI cost well over $100 million. So basically, DeepSeek have been able to prove that maybe you don't need quite as many uh, NVIDIA microchips or semiconductors to build very powerful AI models. And because of that, the NVIDIA stock has taken uh, quite a huge hit. But with all that being said, are the DeepSeek models actually powerful? How powerful are they in comparison to, let's say, ChatGPT or Claude? So this is from the official DeepSeek website. You can see right here the capabilities for the V3, by the way, for DeepSeek, there are two very popular models, the V3 and the R1 models. You can see right here, we've got several benchmarks for English, code, math, and so on. The DeepSeek version 3 outperforms the other models in here, like the uh, Llama, Claude, ChatGPT, and so on. And then even from the documentation, we've got other benchmarks in here with the R1 model outperforming the other models. But of course, these information, these benchmarks are all from the Claude website. So what will third parties have to say? I checked out this one called the Humanities Last Exam. This is actually a very interesting platform. The exam itself consists of about 3,000 very challenging questions from a wide range of subjects. So the whole idea is to test the accuracy of the AI models against the questions. And down here, you can see that DeepSeek actually scored the highest in terms of accuracy. It hit 9.4. In comparison, ChatGPT, which is still the most popular AI model in the world, only hit 3.3%. So DeepSeek did nearly or almost three times better than ChatGPT. We have Grok2, we've got Claude, we've got Gemini, we've got O1. DeepSeek outperformed all of them. So with all of this in mind, it is safe to say that at the very least, the DeepSeek models are on par with the traditional AI models that we already know. It's just that they cost a fraction to uh, develop and design. Now, speaking specifically about how the DeepSeek models were trained, the R1 model in particular is quite unique. See, whenever you're training an AI model, there is something known as the reinforced learning, okay? It's basically a reward system where if the AI model responds correctly to a particular kind of prompt or question, the model will be rewarded, but if it doesn't do so, then it will be penalized, right? Think of it this way, right? You're trying to train a dog. You want a dog to learn how to sit. So if you say sit and the dog doesn't sit, then you don't give the dog a treat. But if you say sit and the dog sits, you give the dog a treat or a snack. Over time, the dog is going to learn that, oh, if my master says sit and I sit, I'll get a treat. But if I don't sit, I'm not going to get a treat. So I might as well just sit. So this reward-based system is what we call reinforced learning, and that's how AI models are trained. All models are trained that way. However, what separates the R1 model from the other AI models is that it did not make use of something known as supervised learning or supervised data. What exactly is this? 
See, other AI models like your ChatGPT, they're given a bunch of data and content and they're asked questions, all right, to test their effectiveness. However, the supervisor or the humans also give these models the answers to the questions. So this way, the AI model, when it's asked a question, it provides the answer. The AI model can check its own answer with the actual correct answer given by the supervisor. So if it's correct, the AI model knows, okay, I did well in here, let me keep this particular answer. But if the answer was incorrect, then the AI model with the assistance of the actual answer provided by the supervisor begins to learn how to respond better in the future. Okay, that's what we call the supervised learning. Dipsic R1 did not go through any supervised learning. It didn't. So in other words, Dipsic had to learn on its own whether or not the answer it gave was actually accurate or not. All Dipsic knew was that, okay, this answer I've given, whether it's correct or wrong, if it was wrong, the AI model was trained to think on its own and try to find out and reevaluate its answers. And that way it was able to think for itself. So this is actually almost sort of like groundbreaking in, in the world of AI. It's a fantastic achievement. And there are those who love this achievement saying it's a, it's a massive step forward. Uh, people like me, you know, I'm getting kind of a little bit concerned, you know, we might be getting to the uh, Skynet uh, territory and very soon we might have AI models that will start thinking for themselves and they may decide that uh, humanity should be wiped out and uh, well, <laughs> I'm sure you've seen enough uh, movies to know uh, what happens uh, next. Now, I wanted to show you in real time how the model actually works, what the interface looks like. This is it right here. It's very, very similar to the interface of other AI models like ChatGPT. You have your chat box or your prompt box. You provide your prompt, you press enter, and of course the model will respond. Unfortunately, just before I started recording, you can see I was getting this, uh, the server is busy message. No surprise, I'm pretty sure there are tens of millions of people around the world trying to walk on the platform. Luckily though, I was able to save a screenshot. And what is this screenshot all about? Well. You see down here, you've got this link here called the DeepThink R1, and it says, use DeepSync R1 to solve reasoning problems. Now, the wonderful thing about this is that if you were to provide a mathematical question, like, you know, what is nine multiplied by nine, and you press this link right here, DeepThink will show you in real time how it's actually thinking behind the scenes to solve the question. Now the screenshot here is this, I was able to save the screenshot. You can see I said, what is nine multiplied by nine? It thought for eight seconds, but look at the reasoning, okay? It says, okay, the user asks, what is nine multiplied by nine? Let me start by recalling basic multiplication facts. Nine times nine is a standard math problem, part of the multiplication tables, and on and on it goes. You can see right there, how it eventually was able to conclude that nine multiplied by nine equals 81. It's actually quite fascinating. And I think this was uh, cute, you know, being able to see in real time how your AI assistant, how your AI model is thinking to provide you with the answer to the question uh, that you asked it. So I thought that was actually uh, a pretty neat feature. Let me conclude the video by talking about the privacy concerns that people have about working with DeepSeek because they are based in China. Now, Dipsic have, of course, come out to claim that they are completely independent of the Chinese government. The government has no influence over them, but I don't believe that. And that's simply because uh, China has very strict AI and cybersecurity laws that require tech companies to comply with uh, government oversight. So Dipsic can say what they want. I don't believe the Chinese government doesn't have any influence over them. One thing I will say though is that the code for the DeepSeek models are open source, meaning that anyone from around the world can have access to the code, they can analyze the code, they can audit the code, they can improve on the code as well. So it's definitely a massive step forward for transparency and open scrutiny, but just because the code is open source doesn't mean that we now have access to the data that was used to train their AI models. These are two completely different things. Code used to design the AI is different from the data used to train it. So we don't know for sure whether or not the data that was used to train the AI models were biased. Maybe regarding certain political issues, the data used will 
be in favor of the Chinese government over, say, the American government, you know, things like that. So we don't really know. And just because the code is open source today doesn't mean that tomorrow it's still going to be open source. That might change. We'll just have to see how things go. So if you do want to work with DeepSeek and you're concerned about privacy, well, you do have a few options. The first one would be to actually host DeepSeek locally on your computer. However, this may not be a viable uh, option because it's going to require plenty of computing resources. You're going to need a very powerful processor, plenty of RAM, at least 32 gigabytes of RAM, plenty of storage as well. So you may not have access to such powerful uh, computers. Uh, if that's the case, then simply avoid uh, working with sensitive data. Avoid things like your, obviously, you know, like your credit card details, your passwords, your uh, home address, things like that. You can avoid uh, inputting those kinds of information on the Dipstick platform. And you can try working with uh, VPNs as well to hide your location and, you know, with things like that. So there's a few uh, options you can go with if you do want to work uh, with DeepSeek. So that's pretty much it. Uh, I might make another video talking about DeepSeek in comparison, in direct comparison uh, with ChatGPT. We'll see how it goes. But that's it for today's video. What did you think about DeepSeek? Do you like the AI models? Are you going to work with them or are you going to avoid working with DeepSeek because they're, you know, based in China? I'd love to hear from you. Uh, let me know your thoughts and concerns down in the comment section below. I'll do my best to answer and respond to as many of them as I possibly can. If this is your first time here on the channel, welcome to Lab Cyber. My name is Alex. I make videos around cybersecurity and AI. So if you enjoy content like this, be sure to subscribe, hit the bell so that you're notified whenever I share a new video. That's it, safe, safe out there, and I'll talk to you next time. Cheers.